The Lord God bless you. I pray that this week has been blessed and holy, and that as you continue to journey towards Holy Pascha, that the remainder of this Holy Week will continue to be blessed and holy as well, so that together we can joyously celebrate in fullness Christ's holy resurrection on Great and Holy Pascha in just a few days, just a few days. I wanted to just share my thoughts with you about something that occurred today in the Orthodox world. I've had a number of people contact me and ask me about it. And I want to be clear that these are just kind of my thoughts. Um, and only really because I think that it really is on people's minds and consciences and they want to know, they want a response, they want to know how they ought to act, how they ought to comport themselves. I think it's an important question. And I think in the days coming that there will be more comments about it. But I wanted to offer something from my perspective as a parish priest and in the way of encouragement nothing like an official statement or anything like that but encouragement because the orthodox life is challenging and we will have a great many challenges throughout our life in the church and so any challenge that we have that we have to face well in Christ and so the, the what I'm talking about particularly today is that it has been reported that a metropolitan of the uh, Patriarchate of Alexandria ordained a woman to serve as a female deacon. Now, I know probably many of you uh, not so long ago uh, went on the internet to hear or watch uh, Ancient Faith's uh, production about the question of deaconess. Um, this is a topic that has been talked about a lot uh, over several, several decades. Uh, the deaconess, what is a deaconess, what does it mean? And there have been many, many articles written. But what happened today, I want to distress this, what happened today with Metropolitan Seraphim of Zimbabwe was ahistorical. It's not something that was ever done. And it is, in that sense, innovative. Now, at the parish level in Orthodoxy, this has very little application. This has something that doesn't affect us hardly at all. I know that there are some people that would not like to hear that. They don't want to necessarily accept that. But I, I just think it's important for us to be reminded that even something like this that could be heretical, even if it was straight out heresy, like Arianism and Nestorianism are these great heresies that we think about, not great in the sense of that they're good, but great in that they were vast, that they really afflicted the church. Even if this were something that was great like this, and it was a heresy that was great like this, then we, of course, as Orthodox, do in fact not only have experience dealing with it and navigating it, but we actually do have the mechanism to do that as well. So I know that this might cause a little bit of unease uh, amongst some of our faithful in the churches because we're used to kind of this sign, sound bite theology where we want a reaction right away. You know, we want to, uh, to dive into it right away and we want to, to take care of business right away. It's not so much that orthodoxy is really slow or anything like that. In fact, we do live in this age where information comes at us rapidly. There's email communications and things like that. So the awareness of things is much more than it would have been in what we consider the ancient world. So our response, not a reaction, but our response has to be something that I think is a good thorough response. It has to be blessed. It has to be one always in humility. So what ought we do uh, if we're in the parish, the average parishioner or the average parish priest, what ought we do when we hear about something like this? Or particularly, let's just say this example, what are we supposed to do about the fact, uh, if it's true, that His Eminence Metropolitan Seraphim of Zimbabwe ordained a woman to be a female deacon? Well, first of all, there's very little that we can do regarding Metropolitan Seraphim. Unless you have his phone number or his email, or you have somebody that can get his phone number or his email, then you're unlikely to reach him, right? Now, 
I'm not even sure, even if you had his phone number or email, whether you should reach him or not. But I will say this, uh, that's not where if we were going to have an effective response that we ought to start. In fact, just like everything in orthodoxy, we ought to start within ourselves first, cultivating humility and prayer, right? And this is particularly important because the great saints show us that regardless of the great heresies that went on in the world, their call remained the same, to be holy. Now, my spiritual father, Father Alexander Addy, told us many times when we were in seminary that as, especially as clergy, we ought to obey the bishop unless the bishop does something immoral, illegal, or something that is heretical, meaning, you know, uncanonical. Now, some, sometimes I say that and people say, well, Father, uh, isn't immoral and illegal the same thing? Think about that in today's environment, all right? So I think Father Alexander makes the distinction well, but it's a good guide for us, okay? And unless our bishop has done something that is immoral, illegal, or heretical, we should follow him, all right? Now, in the instance of Metropolitan Seraphim, if indeed he did ordain a woman to be a deacon, and they're just calling it a female deacon, uh, this is essentially using the prayer for a male deacon, and then ordaining a woman at the altar, and then vesting her the same way that uh, a deacon would be vested, and asking her to do the same things liturgically that a male deacon does. If indeed Metropolitan Seraphim has done that, if that's the case, then what he has done is heretical. And so uh, if he was my bishop and the laity were associated with him, in fact, as Orthodox Christians, we would have an obligation not to follow that bishop because he's now done something heretical. If, if he's done something heretical, if he's, if he's done something illegal or moral, we also have an obligation not to follow him, okay? But in this case, it doesn't seem to be that uh, Metropolitan Seraphim has done something illegal. Now, certainly, if he has ordained a woman according to the right that is reserved for male deacons, I think you could very uh, easily argue that that is it's, it's a great scandal and is indeed immoral. So he probably, if this is the case, he's probably done something not only heretical, but immoral. How could it be heretical that he's done this? Well, holy orders are reserved for men in the Orthodox Church. This is unquestionable. Now, some people have tried to argue otherwise, but they've done so only from a heretical standpoint. It's heresy to, uh, to offer that holy orders in the sense of the hierarchy can be offered to, to women. It cannot be in the church. It's never been done, and to do so is an innovation. So if Metropolitan Seraphim in Zimbabwe has done this, he has innovated and he has essentially uh, made a heretical act. So what, again, can we do? Well, I live in the United States. I can do very little. However, I would say that those who are really, really concerned about the things that happen like this in the church, if you want to take action, if you want to have a proper response, start with being faithful at your own parish. Now, if for some reason, um, you know, you feel compelled to enter more into it, I would say start talking to your parish priest. And yes, even email your bishop. I think what will possibly happen in this scenario is that a greater unified response will come out uh, condemning this action. And I think that... Um, Metropolitan Seraphim will have to give an account of what he has done. I have to say, though, from what I've read online, which was published by the St. Phoebe Center, which has kind of spearheaded these kind of activities over the years, and from the pictures that I've seen, it is particularly damning. This doesn't seem like a mistake. This doesn't seem like somehow, well, she wasn't ordained as a, a deacon, but she was a deaconess. This looks like a full-blown heretical innovation. And so in that sense, um, us as the faithful and us as the clergy in the church, 
even if this is something that has happened in the Patriarch of Alexandria, we not only need to keep an eye on it, but we also need to be prepared to give an account of our faith and to ask our hierarchs to speak boldly against this heresy and this innovation. This doesn't mean that we need to kind of blow our lids and get crazy and, you know, make all kinds of threats or something like that, or is this the end of the world? <clears throat> I don't know. Christ could come again tomorrow. He could come again on Holy Pascha. He'd come again in five days. I, I don't know. Only God knows when the time is right. But I will say, this is, of course, extremely concerning, and it's not something that we can just sit idly by and do nothing about. So the first thing is prayer. Be involved in our local parish and build it up. Also, talk to our parish priests and our hierarchs, our hierarchy, and ask them, you know, to stand boldly against these kind of things. But also, you know, we, we need to be uh, approaching this with humility and love, you know. Um, if this was something that was happening in our backyard, if something was happening in the United States, then perhaps we would be uh, more proactive on a local level. But as it stands, this has become, uh, so far, an isolated incident. I do think that we also ought to be particularly uh, condemning those who are involved in pushing for this and, and setting this up. You know, one big proponent of this has been Dr. Carrie Frost. I don't think that there's any way that we can recommend anything that she's done from this point on because this is a bridge too far. And I, I think we should certainly warn people about St. Phoebe Center and the things that they've done and how radically they're seeking to alter the Orthodox faith. It's something we simply cannot accept, brothers and sisters. Now, again, when we do this, when we take a response, we do it in humility with prayer and discernment, but we also have to remember what my spiritual father said, which I think is a good guide. We need to be patient and we need to be humble and we need to follow our own hierarchs. Unless our hierarchs ask us to do something immoral, illegal, or heretical, then we should, we should be humble and submit to our hierarchs. That's the faith, that's the canons of the church. If something has happened, if we hear of something else, um, unless it's come to our local level, then we need to be very tactful and we need to be discerning about how we respond. We don't need to give ourselves over to kind of a reactionary thinking or reactionary uh, actions towards things, all right? Um, now, as a priest, you know, I do sometimes make very clear statements. Why do I do this? Because I want people to know that the Orthodox faith is not going to compromise and it's not going to be compromised. You know, I've had some people share with me over the years their concerns about this jurisdiction or that jurisdiction. But I think we have to be very careful because in that kind of jurisdictionalism, what ends up happening is Satan and the demons find a way in, right? And they create chaos. Brothers and sisters, we can't allow that to happen. What we have to do is we have to remain faithful and united. And I, I think we have to be careful not to paint with broad strokes, all right? I think we found out, especially um, during the last couple of years, the last two or three years, that things are very challenging and we have to stick together. And that, rem that means remain faithful to the church and what it teaches. When we see someone that is erring, then we have to offer kindness and love and, and pray to God that they will come back to the correct path. I don't desire and I don't think any of us should in any way desire to have any kind of schism in the church. But we should know that sometimes schism does happen. It's historical. We don't have to get crazy about it. We don't have to denounce other people and go looking for people that are not doing. We don't need to become overzealous in our desire and pursuit to be faithful because we could have a great fall as well. And we've already seen that happen in our lifetime. There are many people who have fallen away from the church because they feel that they are, uh, in fact, more righteous than the church. But we have to be very careful and discerning. So uh, I, I, the good principle, again, that Father Alexander Addy gave me and that I give to you, follow your bishop. Unless your bishop has said something or done something illegal, immoral, or heretical, follow your bishop. 
I'm blessed, blessed, blessed to have an amazing Bishop Ar Archbishop Alexander, whom I love dearly. And you know, some people have even attacked him from time to time over the years. But I have to tell you, it was very disappointing for me to see that. He has remained an amazing and faithful hierarch. Um, and I can only thank God for his leadership of our diocese. I pray that you would also pray for your bishop, your clergy in your diocese and your church, and that you yourself would remain faithful in all things to Christ and in church, the, the holy bride of Christ, his church. Right? You have a responsibility to be faithful. I have a responsibility to be faithful. And all together, we have responsibility to be faithful to Christ and the church and build up his body. So that's my message for you. That's my response for you. That's my thoughts about this is do not be too troubled with this. Not so much that, that there is some kind of slowness, but allow time for the church to work and to do what is right. In the meantime, you don't have to sit idly by. Pray, be really involved in your parish, faithfully show up to the service and pray hard. But if the Lord puts on your heart to talk to your priest, to talk to your, your, your hierarchy, to talk to your bishop, please do. The clergy and the bishops are there to serve the faithful. And if we have concerns, if the laity have concerns, of course, of course they should bring them to the church. But please remember, it's all too easy to conflate our concerns with demands. And we always want to be approaching things in humility. Even something as sorrowful as supposedly what has happened today um, at this, uh, this church in, in the Patriarch of Alexandria. I pray that this is not accurate, but unfortunately it does seem from the reports and the photos uh, that this is accurate. And so we pray, we remain faithful, and if we would like to do more in humility, we contact our clergy, talk with them, and talk with our bishop. God bless you, and I pray that the rest of your Holy Week and Holy Pascha is a joyous and blessed one. God bless you.